you grew up on Walt Disney and you were fascinated by Walt Disney's animation techniques and how in the world of Disney he would come on your television and explain to you the technology behind the animation techniques they were using. This was your first inspiration and you wanted to be in a Disney animator. Uh, I, drew, I did a lot of drawing. I entered contests. I bought books on how to, to draw and how to animate. But it didn't happen. You weren't a good drawer. Is no, that... in the, well, I actually don't know what I could have become. Huh. What I found was that when I uh, went from high school to college, that I realized I, uh, I didn't know how to get to the next level. Mm. So the, le the level I saw were these phenomenal Disney animators. There were no schools. Mm. So there was no training ground. So I could measure myself against where they were. And I didn't know the path to get from one to the other. Right. So I switched over into physics. You see, you go into physics, but computers emerge, and somehow you wind up uh, learning about computer vision and animation. Was this at the University of Utah? Yes. That you first were exposed to computers? Yes. So this is new in the whole field of, of computer science. Uh, at this time, uh, ARPA, which is funded by the government, was uh, funding research programs around the United States with very little bureaucracy. And Utah was picked as a place to do graphics, but it was also picked to be one of the first four nodes of what became the Internet. Yes, ARPANET. Yes, called ARPANET. And, and BitNet. Uh, I, later the universities, I think they're called BitNet, yeah. Yeah, there's something there. But the, but the ARPANET was the foundation, and later they just changed the name when it became big enough. But mm. I was at the, one of the first four nodes. So it, we had the Internet people there trying to figure that out. We had compu a computer graphics group and a vision group which is unique in that they were together, working together, even though they're, they're different All on topics. the same campus. All on the same campus. And it was completely free and open, uh, great professors, but also professors who weren't micromanaging. Hmm. It's like, okay, people, we're at the front of the Easter egg hunt. <laughs> Cut the line. Let's go. And this was a very interesting moment in time because the United States is the 60s, right? The early yes. 60s. And the United States was in a panic over Russia. Sputnik had happened, and the government wanted to have basic research because they felt technologically we needed an advantage if we were going to become or maintain supremacy in the world versus the communists versus the Russians. That yeah. was a driving force behind giving you all the ability to just freely experiment with technology. It, the, the thing that I loved about it, and is that this is in retrospect, yeah. because I grew up with the fear of the, of the communist threat. Right. <clears throat> but in 57, they... Uh, launched Sputnik, and it scared the U.S. incredibly because they had jumped ahead of us. Hmm. And the interesting thing about that is the response to that fear was to go out and fund smart people. Amazing. That's an enlightened response. It, and uh, it's yeah. not one that you hear about today. Like, no. And it's like, they did the right thing. <laughs> it's amazing. They, they said, basically, we should just let smart people pursue technology so we get an advantage, as opposed to yeah. going to war. Blowing and, places up. And they built, we built, the U.S. still has by far the greatest uh, 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 graduate and academic program, uh, system in the world. And it comes out of that mindset post-World War II. Uh, and then this is fueled by ARPA. And the whole computer industry is built out of that, uh, 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 that group of people who, who, were, who went to school funded by ARPA. And it's now called DARPA. Yeah. But it, it was an amazing period and very fa uh, formative for me. Right. Who, there were, you had some contemporaries in there who went on to great things as well. Uh, yes, there was uh, uh, John Warnock who went on to form uh, Adobe. Amazing. Created made, the PDF. Yeah, and Photoshop. And Photoshop. Amazing. Uh, there was Jim Clark. Netscape. We did Netscape uh, and Silicon Graphics. Um, we had Alan Kay. To computer I, interfaces? The computer interfaces, as well as, this is the one he's probably, I mean, this is more technical, and like in the technical world, but the um, uh, object-oriented programming, mm. which, and you know it's C++, largely now, object-oriented programming came out of Alan Kay. Right. He was at Utah when I was there, and then went on to, to Xerox Park. So enormously influential people and, uh, and a, a great group of people to work with. 